Ground floor is for storage. Second floor is for living quarters. That is the concept that you really need to understand in learning bahay na bato. Well, you probably might not know, bahay na bato, also mostly known as ancestral house, is a type of house in the Philippines that is prevalent during the Spanish colonial era as well as during the early American colonial era. It is acknowledged that the bahay na bato is derived from the local architecture of bahay kubo. The bahay na bato is most associated with elites as they obviously can afford these houses and they can also personalize the facade of their house. Well, it is hard to discuss the architectural aspect of bahay na bato without personally showing it. So, in solving this situation thingy, do you know what's best in learning bahay na bato? Learning through Minecraft. Playing in a virtual world really helps yourself be immersed. But, do you know what makes playing Minecraft even more enjoyable? Academic sources. You bored na? You better. With that on the way, Bahay na Bato is a Spanish derivation of Bahay Kubo as obviously the Kingdom of Spain colonized the Philippines. From Bahay Kubo, Bahay na Bato has evolved from series of events in reaching its current state and not from a single progenitor event. These events are calamities such as earthquakes, typhoons, and fires that struck the nation, which are the reasons why the materials and methods of construction were changed. Houses and churches in Manila are made of wood, bamboo, and nipa, but these materials are flammable thus the buildings are easy to be engulfed in fire after a while. The locals were opted to change the materials to stone, bricks, and clay tiles, but an all-stone house was quite challenging since no one is familiar with the materials at that time. In 1581, Antonio Cedeno, a Jesuit priest, and Domingo Salazar, the first bishop of Manila, arrived in the Philippines from Mexico. They taught the locals the art of masonry, such as quarrying, preparing, and laying stones, in accordance with the decree of 1587 by Governor General Santiago de Vera that all structures should be made of stone. In 1645, Intermuros had 600 houses. So, behind the bato in the early Spanish colonial era, all of the houses are made of stone up to its columns. The early Bahay na Bato has a very deep foundation and have smaller doors and windows as to not weaken the structure. Hardwood timbers are used for beams, joists, and roof frames. Clay roof tiles replace the flammable cogon grass for roofing. The layout and design of the early Bahay na Bato is similar to the Bahay Kubo, albeit larger in size. The construction projects were initiated and supervised by civil and religious authorities, in which parish priests are forced to handle such chores like bridge building. There is no guarantee of a friar's drawing would be accurately recreated. In reality, there are inconsistencies of measurements in buildings, in which there is no formal training of architects, engineers, foremen, or carpenters. Only using their personal experience, builders often guess their way through. These builders are called maestro de obras. They are their own architect, engineer, and foreman who are employed to cities to direct a project. A maestro de obra typically does not know how to calculate the dimensions of the building. Thus, there is no way to get the exact amount of materials to be used. With that, the maestro de obra orders materials as the work progressed. Add that to the difficulty of transporting materials as well as the lack of knowledge of the maestro de obra on the standard cost estimation procedures. Augustinian scholar Luis Merino theorized that 20 years after the founding of Manila, Filipinos are leading the construction projects such as Pedro Josepe, the maestro de obra of Intramuros of 1591. Merino also proved that for three centuries, Filipino workers and maestro de obra were paid wages. But in the 17th century, earthquakes destroyed the stone houses because geology. Thus, houses are designed to be limited to only two floors with a ground floor made of stone and the second floor made of wood. The first meseta or stair landing is made of stone, while the second flight of stairs are made of wood. Wooden posts are more effective against earthquake stresses than stone posts. In the 19th century, locals already mastered the use of stones and bricks to hide approximately 9 by 9 inch wood posts that carry the weight to the whole structure. The second floor is composed of hardwood such as Ipil and Nara. In 1990, the earthquake ordinance, decreed by the Consultative Council of Public Works, modified the structure of the Bahay na Bato once more. 
The decree calls for thinner wood posts, lighter roof materials such as corrugated galvanized iron sheets, wall thickness at least one-fifth of its height, and shallower foundations up to one meter deep. The house obviously varies in size, in which adobe primarily supports the structure and bound by lime mortar and cement plaster used to full pillars. Tisa, baldosa, shells, ceramic shards, and scoria rocks are used as aggregates. Mulave is used as wood posts as it is impervious to termites and can be placed underground without rotting even hardens as it ages. Hardwood doors of the main entryway as well as its hinges became thicker and larger. Baldosa tiles are used for the ground floor. Nails were used much later. Locals used wooden pegs and dovetail joints to keep the pieces together allowing flexibility under earthquake stresses. It is a surviving type of structure up to this day. Come to think of it, the 18th century might be the dark ages for Bahay na Bato. That's 100 years. Every single Bahay na Bato does not come out uniformly across the Philippines in terms of location and time. As discussed earlier, the first type of Bahay na Bato is made of wood on both floors and a thatch roof. The second type is Arquitectura Mestiza or Mixed Architecture in which stone and wood is used, volada and without volada. The third type is All Brick Type Bahay na Bato in compliance with the 1797 decree by Bishop Pedro Agustin Blaquier that all buildings near the cathedral must be made of stone for fire prevention. The last type is American style Bahay na Bato from the early 20th century which uses reinforced concrete and bricks in making it less bulky. The American style also uses plain or colored glass panes rather than copies as well as placing porticos on the entrance. For facades, there are two types. First is the floral style which is commonly used during the late 19th century and is abundant of floral ornamental motifs. Second is geometric style which is prevalent during the late 18th century. Unlike the floral style, geometric style is much simpler in design. The Bahina Bato is widespread across the country with remarkable variations that was affected by the culture of the people as well as the environment the Bahina Bato is located. First is from northern Luzon in which the common type of Bahina Bato is made of all stone. It lacks a volada and the kitchen became an extension of the house. Second is from central Luzon in which houses are adorned with carvings and sculptures of flowers, leaves, and religious symbols. Third is from Metro Manila in which the Bahay na Bato is the most concentrated as it is the center of the nation. Bahay na Batos in Metro Manila are varied because of Metro Manila being a melting pot of cultures. Fourth is from Calabarazon where houses are made of hewn blocks of coral and adobe. Fifth is from the Bicol region in which locals harnessed volcanic stones. Sixth is from Visayas where precisely cut blocks are made of either coral or adobe. Visayan Bahay na Bato is durable as it does not need to be protected by a layer of palitada. And lastly, seventh is from Batanes in which they adapted the Bahay na Bato from Ilocos and Cagayan to the traditional limestone architecture. First is Sinadumparan, a house with a submerged floor for storage. Second is Raku, a two-floor house with the ground floor as storage and the second floor for living quarters. The Bahay na Bato is the upgraded version of the Bahay Kubo to suit the newer living conditions and the current political climate. The Bahay na Bato is intended to be more earthquake-proof, more translucent, more ventilated, having raised floor against the flood, addition of the media agua from the rain and heat, raised ceiling, open spaces, and larger openings. The houses are strategically oriented based on solar activity and wind patterns of the Habagat and the Amihan. We will now discuss the structural foundation of the Bahay na Bato. By the way, I am not including any outer or inner dimensions such as quantities since the Bahay na Bato comes in different sizes and forms. In supporting the outer elements of the house, a meter deep zocalo, which is part of the wall, is submerged underground. Since a block in Minecraft is 1 meter, the zocalo is a block deep. The pader of the outside is made up of stones or bricks that are bounded by lime mortar. The lime mortar is also sandwiched between the outdoor and the inner wall. Solid masonry is also bonded by lime mortar, but the blocks are laid atop each other in a running pattern. Dry masonry does not use lime mortar and only depends on the block itself. I just put a block thick wall since I don't want to have the gas house. You can just use your imagination. The foundational support for the indoor ground floor are square timber columns that are submerged underground to support the second floor. 
The haligi is supported by footings which comprises of huge stones. I will be using cobblestone for the footings. The underground floor walls are either supported by a framework of a thin brick masonry wall or of thin woven bamboo strips. Both frameworks are covered by stuccos and plasters respectively. For the foundational support of the inner second floor, the floor is made of floorboards that are inch in thickness and are connected using the Languete method. The floorboards are fixed on the soleras, which are rectangular beams laid parallel from each other at a distance about 2 feet. The soleras are perpendicularly connected by a kahagpan. The inner second floor walls are made of a thin piece of wood and are supported by a wooden framework. The framework consists of a pilarete or vertical stud, a trabisano or a horizontal stud, and gililan or a sole plate. I'm only placing a block thick wall. Just imagine the framework inside the walls. The foundational support of the roof is held mainly by the bosolan, which are massive lumbers above the haligi as a support for the tirante. The tirante is a beam that prevents the other beams from being separated. The tahilan forms the slope of the roof and the barakilan connects the tahilan together. The palupo is a beam that is fixed at the ridge of the roof to provide support to the upper ends of the rafters. I will be using planks that is retextured to galvanize iron shape design. I'm sorry that the design looks like shit. I am not that artistic. The rejas is an ornamental metal work that serves as a protection for the window, balcony, and stairs. The rejas also promote air circulation. The volada, my favorite part of the Bahaina Bato, is the protruding part of the second floor which serves as an additional space. Volada is a shorter term for Galeria Volada or Flying Gallery. Brazo or brackets are decorative elements that fill the space of the volada and the roof projection. The pasamano is a window sill that provides the base of a window as well as a handrail. The ventanilla is a small window between the floor and the window sill that provides additional ventilation and light. While birds separate between window openings. The colonete are thin wood columns that also separate window openings. The ventana capis is the iconic checkerboard window that slides to open rather than projected out. The capis panes are small squares of translucent window pane oyster shells that fill the ventana capis. A concha is a capis pane, while concheria is an assembly of conchas. The alero is a projection of a roof. The antifija is a roof decoration. The alulod is a shallow metal channel used to divert rainwater to the ground. The cenepa protects the alulod. The tubo de bajada de agua is a downspout that connects the alulod to the ground, while the tubo de bañeda is a tube that transports foul water to the ground. The roof is made of a metal sheet with its signature wavy texture. The limahoya or the valley is where the two roof slopes meet, while the limatesa or the hip is where the adjacent roof slopes meet. Dos aguas is a type of roof that forms a gable as it lacks a limatesa, while the cuatro aguas is a type of roof that has a limatesa. The media agua or an awning is a roof like structure above windows as a protection to the heat and rain. Burned clay tiles called teja once covered by the bato roofs. These tiles are classified to teja canalada or semi cylindrical tiles and teja plana or flat tiles. Above doors are the calado that provides allowance for ventilation, while the espejo are panels between windows that also provide additional ventilation and light dispersion. Persiana have thin, slanting slits that are either fixed or can be adjusted. They also provide solar protection and ventilation. So in summary, inner elements really are just for light dispersion and ventilation, in which that's the whole point of the Bahay na Bato anyways. We're now going to talk about the rooms of the Bahay na Bato, in which we can now finally apply the concept of Ground floor is for storage. Second floor is for living quarters. Upon entering the Puerta Mayor, we are entering a space called the Zaguan, where it is a storage space for calesas, processional floats, and old furniture. When the calesas enter, it acts as a transition space where people can automatically enter the house to the staircase leading to the second floor. In the ground floor, there is also the aljibe, which is an enclosed masonry cistern used for water storage as it is directly under the azotea. The stored water is rainwater that is filtered by layers of charcoal, gravel, and sand. The rest of the ground floor are the bodega, which are rooms that store items like grain. Between the ground floor and the second floor is the hagdan. A meseta is located at the foot of the stairs but is also found between stairs. A baitang is the upper surface of the step while the takip silipan is the vertical board between the baitang as covering. The pasamanyo is used as a handhold and protection from fall damage. 
A madring hagdan holds and supports all the steps and railings of the stairs. Upon ascending the stairs, you will find two places. First is the entresuelo, where clients must wait before entering the despacho. Second is the kaida, or also known as the antesala, which functions as a receiving room for guests as well as the transition space after the stairs. The word kaida probably comes from the word kaer, which means to fall or to drop, as women can let their skirt fall after climbing the stairs. The thing is, I used Google Translate and I found that the Spanish word kaida means drop, but my sources say it is caer, and Google Translate agrees with it too, so I do not know who to believe anymore. After entering the kaida, the guests are expected to enter the sala, or specifically the sala menor. The sala is a central room to show one's status as well as a space for tertulias, such as piano playing, singing, dancing, poetry reading, and discussions. The other type of sala, the sala mayor, is a larger sala in which larger tertulias are held. Furnitures are light that they can be set aside during dances at the center of the room. I intended not to use this because this bahina bato is a regular one. Cuarto or rooms are adjacent to the sala, as it is used by the residents to take afternoon naps as it is cooler in the afternoon. The despacho is where the owner of the house conducts business with their clients. The oratorio is a prayer room as a family gathers for praying the rosary, novenas, angelus, and prayers for the dead. The comedor is the dining room. Next is the cocina where all the cooking, pounding of grain, and clothes ironing take place. Some houses have its cocina separated as it is a fire hazard. I'm going to incorporate the cocina as a second floor room. Baño is the bathroom. The azotea serves as the outer terrace of the house and it is located near the cocina. Finally, the dispensa is the room to store food as it is near the cocina and the comedor. The only room of the roof is the mirador which is a lookout slash viewing space that is surrounded by windows and decorative carvings. We are now going to talk about the specific elements and furniture that fill the bahay na bato. I will be using modern furniture since I cannot replicate antique ones in Minecraft and it looks dope either way. The facade is the outer design of the house that is giving its personality. The pillars there are fake pillars that are articulated from the wall. Entering the zaguan through the puerta, we can see that the floor is decorated by machuca tiles which are Mediterranean style tiles. Deeper in the Zaguan, you can see the Porte Cochere, which houses the Calesa as well as the procession float. In Kaida, we can see the Capilla, which is a long bench that resembles church chairs, and the Bastonero, which is a hat and cane rock. We also have the Escritorio, which is a large chest that is designed with carvings. At the Sala, we can see the Butaca, which is a wooden reclined chair, and the Tumba Tumba, which is a rocking chair. We can also see the consolas, which is a rectangular table, mesita, which is a small table, and mariposa, which is a type of sofa. In the cuarto, we can see the four poster cama, as well as the almario, which is a vertical pillow rack used to air dry pillows, bed linens, and the banique. We can also see the ropero, which is a woven basket used to store dirty clothes, as well as the freestanding sink or the lavadera. In storing clothes, we have the comoda, which is a low two-door cabinet. At the despacho, we have the gallinera, which is a long bench that resembles a chicken cage, and some chests called baul. In the oratorio, we can see the urna, which is a carved altar that houses statues of saints, as well as the virinha, which are small dioramas of biblical scenes enclosed inside a bell-shaped glass. In the comedor, we can see the estante, which is a shelf where chinaware and dishware are displayed, while the bajillera is a cabinet used to store kitchenware. Above the comedor are ceiling cloth fans that are called punka that works by pulling a cord or a string. Mine's redstone powered because I'm bougie. In this pensa, we have the fresquera, which is a storage room for salted food that is placed on the wall. In the cocina, we have the banquerahan, which is a dish rack outside the kitchen window in which dishes and cups can be air dried. The tapugan is a platform where the clay stove is placed. The pamingalan is a cabinet used to store leftover food and preserves in which it has slits so air can pass. It is also standing on liquid so ants cannot infest it. The pugon is a clay oven, while cristalera is a glassware storage, and also nivera is an ice chest. In the baño, we can see the banera, which is a bathtub where a cork can be unplugged at the bottom so water can drain below it, and the latrina, which is a wooden box with a hole used for defecation. In the azotea, the space is under a ceiling that helps cover the space from sunlight. The azotea contains lounge chairs like solihia, which is a wicker weave chair, as well as a silla perezosa, which is a foldable reclining chair. I had so much fun while making the Minecraft Bahay na Bato as well as researching and deep diving the vernacular. 
Little did we know that the Bahay na Bato is much complex than we thought, especially its history. For disclaimer, in no way I am a professional architect, in such I know every element and aspect of architecture. I am just an amateur culture enthusiast in which architecture is a part of culture studies. I did not even give justice to all the architectural analysis, research papers of the Bahay na Bato, with those formulas and tables. Well, I can read them and understand them because I was under literal sciences for 6 years, but I didn't have the prior architectural knowledge. For the Minecraft aspect of it, because I'm a good person, I will be sharing the world and the research pack I made through a Google Drive link and that link is in the description. I plan to use the replay mod. It did work but it keeps saying that FFmpeg is not installed when in fact it is installed. So I'm frustrated about that. I also tried installing furniture mods but it can only be accessed by Forge but the replay mod is Fabric and Forge and Fabric are not compatible with each other so I'm really frustrated. Apparently, this is the 6th video of this channel and I really hope that you subscribe. Please like, comment, share and hit the notification bell because it will really help a ton. So uh, thank you for watching from Salingogon.